here today with uh, Maribeth Back, um, someone who's very familiar with uh, mixed reality technologies. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, Maribeth is the manager of the Mixed Realities and Immersive Group here at FX PAL and Palo Alto, where we are, um, designing and building research prototypes um, of virtual environments and augmented reality uh, systems for enterprise. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this, please? Um, well, FXPAL is a Fuji Xerox research lab here in Palo Alto, clearly. Um, we're focused on multimedia, but we interpret that kind of widely to include things like ubiquitous computing. So we're interested in the interplay of the real world and the virtual worlds. Um, we have been working with, um, uh, we're, we're interested in industrial collaboration. A lot of people are working on sort of office and uh, workplace collaboration, sort of focused on cubicles and offices and, and things like that. But what we're really interested in um, for this project is how do we take that out into industry? How do we take it onto a factory floor? Um, what Clearly, companies like Boeing have been using augmented reality for decades. But how do we make that a little bit more lightweight and more powerful at the same time? Um, we're interested in the idea of the virtual world, um, being able to have many people in a spatially uh, coherent uh, uh, model of a factory or some other kind of industrial setting. And we're interested in seeing what kind of collaboration can happen in that space, um, what kind of technologies are needed to be able to support that kind of collaboration. Do we need PowerPoint? Do we need Word documents in Excel? Do we need an extremely easy way to get um, sensitive, secure data into the world from the factory machines. How do we how do we parse all that out and what kind of platforms can handle this now and might be able to handle it in the future? Um, at the Metaverse U, you mentioned the Cho Chocolate Factory and some of the mixed reality work that you were doing there. Uh, can you share with us some of that please? Sure. Um, we are fortunate to be collaborating with um, the Cho Chocolate Factory. Uh, CHO is it, spelled T-C-H-O, and it's not an acronym for anything, as far as I can tell, or for many things. Um, they are a, a new chocolate factory in San Francisco on Pier 17. Um, they are very um, uh, high-tech oriented. The, uh, the uh, CEO is Louis Rosetto of Wired Magazine. The uh, chief chocolate officer is Timothy Childs, who used to run the Web 3D Roundup at Zigraph. Um, so they know, uh, they, they know and love and understand technology, and they're very um, open to working with us, which is it's an amazing opportunity for folks. You, you never see somebody just throw up on their factory floor and say, sure, come and play with our quarter million dollar machines. <laughs> so um, uh, we've been working together for about two years, and the main idea is we are making a mirror world um, model of the chocolate factory floor. And what we want to be able to do is have that model show up in numerous different virtual world platforms to see uh, which one works best, or uh, if, if there, maybe there isn't a best, maybe some are better optimized for some things rather than others. Um, in the process of this, what we've wound up doing is we, we have a whole set of parameters for what we need. We need to be able to get the data from the machines on the floor. We need to be able to import live HD streaming video. Um, we need to be able to share documents in the world. We really need it to be super secure. Um, so, and these are these are pretty much all things that you would want uh, in any kind of industrial application. So, uh, this is what we're what we're looking at is uh, the collaboration with Cho for us has really turned into the creation of, if you will, a test use case that can be applied against different virtual world platforms just to see how they work, whether they fit. And we're actually sort of developing a, a sort of system for comparing different virtual world platforms. And it, so it goes to, to every every point and then yeah, it gives pre configured yeah. machines and then there's the videos. So at any point in time can I uh, take over control and then move to a machine or is it all just descriptive? You uh, can yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, to be able to control a uh, 
set of factory machines or lab machines remotely from uh, an iPhone or other mobile device. Uh, this is built for an iPhone. Um, what we're looking at right here is uh, a view from a pan tilt zoom camera in that is in the lab at uh, the Cho Chocolate Factory in downtown San Francisco. And the idea here is to be able to um, control the uh, uh, view of the lab through these buttons on the iPhone. So this is actually moving the real camera around, you know, 35 miles away from here. And probably annoying the heck out of show there. <laughs> She's used to it. Um, but the idea is to be able to um, sort of look at the, at the machines and to sort of be able to say, oh, I want to see what's going on with the timers, because the timers are about the oven, uh, roasting oven times, and sort of be able to sort of adjust, you know, hone in right on the, you know, sort of detail of a timer, and then be able to you know, pull, pull all the way back out, and, you know, go and like, look over at the left-hand side and see, what, see what's going on with um, the uh, chocolate grinding and uh, heating machines. These are called melanges. Uh, how do you work with existing uh, 3D web standards, such as X3D or VRML? Um, for uh, web 3D standards, well, okay, the, um, the factory itself right now is mostly built in Kalata. We did start with X3D um, because we started with Wonderland. Um, and so we, we do have um, the machine models in X3D. And we, I'm sure we'll use those again as, as we explore other platforms. Um, dear to my heart for a long time. We actually did some uh, work at Park with that in the, in the 90s. Um, it's actually very useful for um, a researcher, uh, somebody in a lab who is trying to build their own virtual world, uh, not ne needs to be able to have control over every parameter of a virtual world. So if you um, are, for example, uh, building a molecular model of something, you want to be able to just have your hands on it. And Verbal's very good for that, being able to just write your own scene graph, just be able to control every aspect of something. Um, and we have a couple of, like our principal scientist here, uses that for a lot of his work. So I, th I think that's true in a number of research labs I've seen. And if, if you had a chance to um, kind of uh, give some advice to students who are coming out in, in these times now with all of this uh, blurring of realities, um, what, what would you share with them? What would you kind of pass along uh, from your experiences? Oh, well, don't get married to one platform. Um, d uh, there, are, there are wonderful, wonderful things out there that get so deeply committed to one thing that, that you kind of cut yourself off from other possibilities. Um, I think that uh, one of the best things you can do for yourself as a student is uh, just develop, um, get a handle on the, the things that make things versatile. So Python, okay, I know I keep talking about Python, but it's the thing that glues things together in all of these different worlds that we're looking at. They're from Java, C sharp, C++, whatever, they all are um, communicating via Python. So that kind of interstitial, interstitial technologies is a really useful um, uh, thing to have under your belt if you're a technologist. Um, the other thing is that it's very, really, very hard to find someone who is deeply technical and also has a view or a vision for the technology, uh, or about the technology. So um, being able to talk not only about how something works, but why it should work either that way or a different way, and being able to understand applications in the real world, um, that kind of a person is really valuable um, if, if you can find that. All right. Well, thank you very much for your uh, time. A pleasure.